certainly there are a couple of navies in Africa which in terms of numbers are about parity with us. But quality, there is no comparison whatever. And that quality is extremely important in the Navy. A Navy is a high-tech business. Uh, and if your weapon systems don't work, or not 100%, then you might as well not have them. And this is our big uh, advantage, and the advantage we've got to hang on to is quality, quality people. And uh, as a result, uh, we have an extremely professional Navy, I believe as professional as the British or the American navies. And uh, we can face anything that Africa can throw at us, easily. A military strategist once wrote, one does not fight with men against material. It is with material served by men that one makes war. And in many ways, this encapsulates the situation confronting the South African Navy, crippled as a protector of the vital Cape Sea route because of the arms embargo. But nevertheless, having risen bravely and competently to the challenge of meeting the naval requirements of this country's extensive shoreline. Perhaps modest in size, the South African Navy has nevertheless achieved a state of self-sufficiency and efficiency which ensure that any attack on that which it protects is either doomed to fail or will result in severe enemy losses. For the past 10 years, the backbone of the South African Navy's surface forces has been the strike craft. Relatively small in size, this ship nevertheless packs a powerful punch. The nine ships of the Strikecraft Flotilla operate under the motto, the last to fire is the first to die. And their speed, maneuverability, and fearful weapon system provide them with a strike first capability difficult to outdo. Locally built, the overriding feature of the Strikecraft is its South African produced Scarpion missiles, which provide the ship with its awesome impact, even when pitted against a much larger warship. The launch of a missile is the culmination of complex technological procedures involving detection, classification and engagement. Here speed and accuracy are paramount and in the reddish glow of the ops room, the tension of concentration prevails. In addition to the missiles, a strike craft has on deck two 20mm guns, two Brownings, plus two formidable 76mm guns. This simulated air attack calls for combat state one. Within seconds, the guns are chattering and booming, and the attacking planes face a barrage of metal hurtling out of stabilized weapons, some supported by the radar-assisted fire control unit. The strategy thus far has been to retain a qualitative advantage over our potential enemies and to ensure that the highest level of realistic combat training is maintained at all times by our surface combat forces. We have ensured that this high state of readiness is visible at all times in order to ensure deterrence. Remember that we would operate as far as is possible in conjunction with our submarines which are excellent platforms indeed. As far as some sort of intervention by other forces is concerned, it's a little more difficult to quantify. Obviously we have our limitations, but what we have, and here I include the combination of submarines, maritime strike aircraft, and our strike craft, which would be essential in such a scenario, I believe that not many countries could make a realistic assessment of their chances and find that they can afford to take the risk of coming to our home ground, taking us on 
and losing their money. They run silent, they run deep. And in the realm of subsurface warfare, this country's three Daphne-class submarines remain a significant deterrent. These vessels have been with the fleet since the early 1970s, but their defense systems are constantly being updated. Underwater sonar identification is an exacting and important task. Because of unpredictable and severe temperature gradients off the Cape Coast, the detection of lurking submarines is difficult for surface sonars, with the result that South Africa's offshore waters have been dubbed a submariner's paradise. Armed with 12 torpedoes and having a range of some 8,000 kilometers, these hunters and killers of the deep dare not be discounted by an enemy force. And if speculation that South Africa is well on the way to building her own submarines is incorrect, then certainly it's true to say that this country is giving that possibility serious thought. Below waters, the submarines. Skimming the surface, the nippy strike craft. But the eye in the sky is provided by the Albatross. Traditionally the Navy's buddies, Southern Air Command runs the coastal patrol squadrons and all describe working relationships as excellent. The most recent star in the naval firmament is the 12,500 ton SAS Drakensberg, the biggest and most technologically advanced ship yet designed and built in South Africa. Initially assisting and eventually destined to replace the aging SAS Tafelberg replenishment vessel, the Drakensberg has become a valuable addition to the Navy. It enhances surveillance and rescue capabilities and in the service of operational vessels, it increases their efficiency.